So in today's video, we're going to take a look at a topic that is very near and dear to my heart, and that is the topic of improvising on the guitar. It's something that I think a lot of beginners are scared of, and understandably so. I used to be scared of it too. Um, and it's something that a lot of my students come to me looking to improve their skills on, because again, it's this kind of scary, impenetrable fortress at first. And so hopefully this video will help demystify that for you, and I'll give you some tips that I give to all of my students who come to me looking to improvise. So the first thing that I find with improvisation is we're kind of scared to do it, and we think that we need all of these different skills and all of these different scales. But I actually like to think of improvisation as something that can help us practice our scales and practice our chords and whatever in a, in a musical kind of fashion. So, um, for this video, I'm only going to use this first box of the A minor pentatonic, which for whatever reason is kind of the first scale us guitarists get comfortable with almost always. Um, and so I'm going to show you how you can use this to make some good music and start to improvise. So, improvising it deals with, with making up music on the spot, which is of course scary. But the first thing that I always tell my students and people who are interested in improvising is that you already know how to improvise um, because you know what a really good guitar solo sounds like in your head and you know what you want to play on the guitar. There's just, you know, the, the mind-fingers connection isn't there and maybe there is some technique stuff that you have to sort out to be where you want to be, but you can definitely start improvising today. So the first thing that I get my students to think about is in your head, this is an exercise I get people to do, where you can think of an idea, so say it's a ba 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 na Pretty easy idea, but now I'm gonna take that ba 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 na and I'm gonna translate it to this position of my minor pentatonic scale. So I got... There it is. da da ba 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 da ba da Um... There, I came in a little higher than I wanted to be, I think. I might have wanted to be. So you know what I mean? Just practice singing some of these ideas that you hear in your head and figuring out how to play them in these positions. I almost think about it as like the ideas generated in your head and then the filter that you put that idea through is kind of where your scale knowledge comes in. So there I'm fitting all of my ideas into this minor pentatonic box. So that's one of the first things I get my students to do, is that you already kind of know these things. So to give you an example, I have this kind of loop prepared here of a um, just a, a simple blues and A backing track. And I'm really sorry if you can hear my cat having the time of her life for the plastic spring in the background. But here is that, uh, that idea demonstrated with a backing track in real time. Ba -ba -da -ba -da -da. So I'm just singing these simple ideas and trying to play them on the guitar. You don't have to be a good singer. I'm certainly not the world's best singer. I could tell you that right now. Um, but it's a really simple way to start getting some musical ideas because one of the biggest problems I think people find when they start improvising is, you know, the backing track or the you're jamming with your buddy, whatever, starts going. And there's this tendency to... Where we're just trying to, you know, cram our way through the scale and hope that magic happens. And uh, I'm sorry to tell you that magic rarely happens when you're just playing scales. So I always try to think that the idea is coming from my head or from whatever, uh, whatever great source above, rather than trying to hope that magic comes out of these scale patterns that I practiced. So that practice of singing phrases and trying to figure out how they work on the guitar is one of the most powerful things that you can do when you first set out to improvise. Um, the second thing that I like to recommend students do is that I always say that there's kind of like music, some people don't like this analogy where music is like a language, but I, I'm a pretty big fan of it in many cases, where 
Um, sometimes when my students are improvising, they kind of sound like uh, maybe you guys have a friend who's just constantly rambling on and on, and they talk really fast and they don't take any breaks, and it's really, really hard, and you get tired listening to them because they're talking so fast. And that's what a lot of beginner improvisers sound like. And they tend to be just playing the scale, again, like I said in the, in the earlier example. Um, and that's not very engaging, and that's not very fun to listen to as a listener. I mean, sometimes, again, I'm a big fan of a lot of guitars who play flashy pyrotechnic stuff. But one of the big things I like to think about is cadence, which is how does everything that you're doing breathe? Where are the pauses? You know, like if you think about uh, someone giving a great speech, um, you know, there's pauses to give certain bits emphasis and musically it should work the same way. So I'm gonna play really quick. I'll do a little example of me just trying to fill every nook and cranny and then what happens when I create some space. So here's me in that A blues backing track or loop again. So here I'm gonna fill all the space. space. So there, hopefully that came across, uh, it was still actually a pretty busy improvisation, but there's kind of gaps that kind of tell you where my phrases are ending and they let you, they give the listener and you uh, a chance to think and kind of be like, okay, well, what, what was that about? Um, and that's something that I feel like a lot of beginners lack. So don't try it. The space is actually better. Like you can play some great phrases and solos with only a couple notes. Like for example, this is another thing I like to do with my students when they are you know, trying to fill every nook and cranny and they can't get out of it, <laughs> is I like to use this um, idea of saying, okay, I'm only going to play with those four notes, and then you have to make something with it. And you have to, when you only have four notes, you can't default to running the scale. So I'm going to use just the four notes that are on my B and E string, and I'm going to play some interesting ideas. So here, let's, let's see what happens. So I played, I mean again, it wasn't earth shattering, but uh, it, it was a musically coherent and pleasant to listen to kind of experience. So that's something that I, I find students need to work on a lot too, is, is just finding ways to break you out of just wanting to play scales and trying to keep things so that there's a cadence to them. Um, the second, or no, sorry, this is now the third. The third tip and last tip that I like to give people is when you're improvising, it's important to use punctuation. Um, and musical punctuation is a little bit difficult to, because because there's no, you can't define it, you just kind of feel it. So like if I played that burner sounds really, really final. So one thing I get my students to think about sometimes is ending notes. So in our particular position here, the two best ending notes that I have in terms of like a strong, hard period would be the note A. In this position, I have three of them on the fifth fret, on the seventh fret uh, of the D string, and then on the fifth fret of the E string, the high E string. Um, and then the other one would be E, which I have two of, one on my seventh fret of my A string and one on the fifth fret of my B string. Those are really good places to kind of put like, it's like a period. Um, and I'll show you what I mean. So if I'm playing along to this back and track, oh, and I've, changed modes. Okay, here we go. Punctuation now here. Punctuation. Now let me use the E. So 
there I'm using those, hopefully that comes across, where I'm using it as musical punctuation, where I'm actually kind of signaling that the phrase is over, and that lets, lets the listener kind of listen to things. And this has actually brought me to a fourth tip. I was only going to do three. But with these bits of musical punctuation, I always get, particularly the blues is a great way to dive into this, but I always like to think of the idea of kind of call and response, or just keeping phrases related. So when you're improvising, uh, so this is another thing that a lot of beginner improvisers will do. I sometimes joke that they throw their ideas off a cliff, where they'll play a really good musical idea, maybe they go... And then, so that's a great opening phrase. And then they'll just be like, uh, throw something totally new in it. And this idea of call and response, again, it's hard to actually quantify, but you feel it. And it's this idea of making things actually relate to one another. So I'll try to do my, well, I'll do one round and I won't, I'll throw things off a cliff. And then when the form starts again, I will, uh, try to keep my ideas related to one another so that they're answering so you can hear the difference because again it's not you, I can't quantify and say exactly why this works but you, you feel it when it's right so here's me throwing ideas off a cliff Right now, here I'll answer my ideas. So there, everything just kind of, it's almost like you're telling a story, you're writing a story kind of while it happens. So. To me, it's like, you know, it's almost like you're having a conversation with your friend, and if I go... It's like, yeah, and then what happened? That's what happened. Then... Oh, she was also there? Yeah, she was. And that last bit there, I used this idea where I kind of kept this idea, so I did this... Or something like that. Again, it was improvised, so I don't know exactly what it was. But I took this same kind of motif and I moved it further down the scale. And that helps uh, all these ideas kind of feel like they're actually connected. So anyways, that's a kind of quick crash course on some ideas to try out while improvising. Because I find it's really this kind of mystified thing that a lot of us struggle with. So I really hope you found this useful. Uh, if you did, I'd really appreciate it if you could like and subscribe. It really helps me out more than you could know. I've got new videos coming out every Monday and Thursday uh, with lots of great lessons like this. If you'd like to take some guitar lessons with me, I have a link to the contact page on my website down below. I've actually been having lessons with a bunch of you from YouTube and it's been really fun to connect with you. I teach all levels of students, all genres of students. And I'd absolutely love to help you with whatever you're working on on the guitar. And lastly, I wish you a wonderful day, and I hope you get to have some fun playing the guitar. Thank you.